Well, President Biden has signed legislation to help Ukraine defend itself against Russian troops and bolster Poland and other Eastern European allies affected by the invasion. Biden resurrected a World War II measure signing the Lend-Lease Act in the Oval Office. It allows the government to accelerate weapons shipments to Ukraine for its battle against Russia's invasion. He said the cost of the fight was not cheap, but caving into aggression would be even more costly. I'm signing a bill that provides another important tool in our efforts to support the government of Ukraine and the Ukrainian people in their fight to defend their country uh, and their democracy against Putin's brutal war. And it is brutal. Every day, Ukrainians pay with their lives and, and they fight along again. The, the atrocities that the Russians are engaging in are just beyond the pale. And uh, the cost of the fight is not cheap. But uh, caving to aggression is even more costly. That's why we're staying in this. I want to thank members of Congress here for getting this passed and everyone who supported the bill. And the bill demonstrates the support for Ukraine is pivotal at this moment. For more on this, we can cross live to Washington, D.C., where Arise U.S. correspondent Eric Ham joins us now. Thank you for joining us, Eric. Uh, President Biden is resurrecting a World War II measure. Can you tell us how this legislation is going to get weapons to Ukraine faster? Yeah, this uh, Lynn Lisa Act, it's uh, an act that was used during World War II. Uh, we know that the United States used its great effect uh, for countries including the UK and Britain. And what this does is it actually el eliminates a number of the uh, laws that will allow the United States to be able to lease and lend uh, products to Ukraine uh, and also reduce the amount in terms of the cost and also will allow the United States to eat some of those costs uh, as well. And so this is a program that will allow them to move with speed and efficiency to be able to get them products there. In addition to that, we know that the United States, uh, the Pentagon specifically, has been providing military weapons and capabilities to Ukraine, but also another avenue that uh, was launched a, a few weeks ago that we heard from the Pentagon Press Secretary, Admiral James Kirby, is that they will also be working directly with defense contractors to also provide weapons and capabilities. So what we're seeing now is a three-pronged approach that the United States is using to make sure that Ukraine gets what it needs and it gets these uh, capabilities uh, to the theater uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, the Pentagon directly providing uh, weapons from U.S. defense contractors. And now this Lend-Lease program allows the United States to actually just lend products uh, very quickly. And also this means they don't have to go through uh, Congress to be able to do that. So this moves much quicker, uh, much quickly, much more efficiently. Now, the president has said supporting Ukraine in its war will not come cheap. What about the extra $33 billion he has requested from Congress? You know, that's going to get a little bit tricky. Uh, we know that the House of Representatives has returned from their week-long recess, and they are now beginning the process of, of marking up this supplemental package, this $33 billion. In fact, this is going to be on the floor of the House of Representatives today. But what we are seeing now is that there are some Democrats who actually want to tie the $33 billion supplemental package with the $10 billion in COVID funding that could bog this process down. And the reason for that is because we know that a number of Republicans who are anxious to pass that $33 billion supplemental package, they want to do so and they want to do so very quickly. And they believe tying the two together could actually uh, make that process move slower because we already know some simply are not, some Republicans in, in fact are not supportive of actually tying COVID relief and, sub and military supplemental aid together. So while, uh, and so while they, this, this supplemental package could move much more cleanly, much more faster, uh, uh, individually or alone, uh, it, we're not sure if that's actually going to happen. The White House has said they want the, the, the supplemental package to pass cleanly, which means they want it to pass as a standalone bill because they believe they can get it through much quicker. Uh, but right now, it's unclear if that's going to happen. The Senate Majority Leader, Chuck Schumer has been noncommittal about whether or not he will move the package individually or try to tie COVID relief uh, to that. So this is a potential battle that we're watching to see how it's going to play out today. 
So, Eric, the president has also said that he fears that Putin has no exit strategy in Ukraine. What does that mean for American policy moving forward? Well, actually, I think that has greater implications uh, beyond just the United States. And this has been something that the Pentagon has been focused on for quite some time, that there is no exit strategy for Putin. And what that means is how can he save face, walk away from this war and maintain his reputation? But right now, there doesn't appear to be an exit strategy for him. One reason is because the United States has not provided an exit strategy. The crippling sanctions uh, will remain in effect. And as we heard from the Pentagon secretary, they are looking at efforts to try to weaken Russia so that if and when this war in Ukraine ends, uh, you, Russia cannot simply uh, repeat this again in a year, two years or five years. So what we're seeing here is there, there is no extra strategy because we know that the sanctions will remain in effect. In addition to that, the United States is going to continue to provide Ukraine with the necessary capabilities to defend itself both today and going forward. Well, we continue to monitor the situation. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday this afternoon, Eric Ham.